Fan, 107.9 FM, 1560 AM, and anywhere you listen online and podcast. You can be a part of the conversation at 321-984-1234. Now, here's your host, Mark Moses. Good afternoon and welcome. Welcome indeed to a Moses Monday edition of, yes, the Mark Moses Show right here on Sports Radio 107.9 FM, 1560 AM and anywhere you listen online. Yes, I was off for the last six shows as I went on my first European adventure since 2019. I am back I have some jet lag, I am exhausted, but I'm ready to rock and roll. I am. I had so much fun, and I know there's a lot of crazy things that happened while I was gone, and I'm going to get to them today. I am. I'm going to get to them later today, tomorrow, Wednesday, and yes, for the rest of the week. But I'm not going to start there, and I was very conflicted, because there are a lot of crazy stories going on right now, but you know what? No. No, this is the tradition we do on this show. Every time I come back, I try to share as many stories and experiences from my adventures I can. And I know that this is a family show. And I went to a bunch of places where it's not really family friendly. And I'm going to try to give the best explanation I can without also not getting fired live on the radio. That's what I'm going to try to do. So this time... This is what I did. It was a lot of fun. And my thing is, if you're hesitant, you're not sure, you're afraid, you've never done it before, hey, take the advice of Uncle Mark. Get your keister on a plane and start seeing this world. And I really felt this when I was flying back overseas on Saturday. Your life cannot turn into home grocery store office and then when you get home you're tired and you sit there and then you just watch youtube videos and tiktok and then you're sending memes to people some of that stuff makes me happy once in a while but overall i can't keep doing that that can't be my life and i feel like over the last couple weeks with how hot it's been outside that i haven't been able to really go anywhere So I have after work, I go home, I'm tired, and I just sit there and I like watch videos on YouTube and I send crazy clips to my buddies and I'm like, this can't just be my life after a while. I can't. Now again, the heat is not helping. Uh, No football on is not helping. But this can't be our lives after a while. We can't just sit on our butt and then just send memes to our buddies. That can't be our life after a while. It can't. I was a little hesitant to go. I'm like, Mark, do we even have money to go on this trip? We are going to figure this out, and we're going to do it. And yes, that's how my inner monologue works, where there's like two people in my head, and we're constantly going back and forth. I mean, I am a Gemini after a while. So, let's get to the meat and potatoes here. This time, this was my fourth trip going overseas. This time, I went to London. I went to Dublin, and I went to Amsterdam. I have been to London three times previous, so I know that city. And if you know Billy Mims, head basketball coach at Florida Tech, he used to coach there, he used to live there. We both agree, we love that city. I honestly, I could go two or three days just getting lost on the train and exploring new areas. I love that city. It's so much fun. It it really is. And I started there. So it's nothing new going there for me. I've hit all the different museums, all the big, you know, travel spots. I've been to the different neighborhoods, but it's just like, it's still fun to go. It really is. And, and I really like where I got off the plane, went to my hotel. I I sat down. I took a nap for like an hour. I get up and I do this every single time I go see big Ben. And then I walk a couple miles all the way to London tower. And I love seeing all the sites and the people. And it's just, it's incredible. And August is that time where, and it's bizarre to say, there in Europe, everyone's on vacation. The whole country and all of Europe. No one's working. Everyone's having a great time. So there were so many people walking around. Really, really walking around. And as usual, I've turned into my father where I can't sleep on the plane. I can't, I can't do it. It's a seven, 
eight hour flight. It's overnight. I went Friday night from Orlando straight to London. Can't sleep. So I slept 45 minutes on the plane. I took an hour nap at the hotel and then I just start running around. Good times. Good times overall. I like the first hotel I stayed at was in the uh, Paddington area. And if you don't know where that is, think of when you were a kid, there was that cartoon Paddington Bear. That's what that's based on, that area. So I get to the hotel. I'm exhausted. I tell the guy, hey, is it possible I can check into my hotel early? I'm going to pass out. I have jet lag. And the guy working there, the guy goes, oh, for you, Mark? 20 pounds, and we'll let you go in early. I'm like, you SOB, come on. Then he goes, all right, Mark, here's where you're staying. You're on the fifth floor. The toilets are on the fourth floor and the sixth floor. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Your room's on the fifth floor. The toilets are on the fourth floor and the sixth floor. So I didn't have my own bathroom. I paid for this hotel room not knowing that there's no toilets. And again, overseas, this is very key. This country, we call it a restroom, and we call it a bathroom, or the little boy's room, or the little girl's room, whatever you want to use. Them, it's the toilets, or the loo. Toilets. You don't say restroom, they don't know what you're talking about. So I'm like, what, what, what? So, all right, well, here starts the adventure. So it's one of those things where it's a really old building. Remember, there's no elevators in these buildings. So you're going up the flight of stairs, I'm like, where's the bathroom? So luckily there was only like about two or three people staying there, you know, in the same building. So, so it's like, I was back in the college dorms sharing the bathroom. I at least had my own room. It wasn't one of these pods that I've seen online. No, it's a room. Close the door. I unpacked, I passed out and then shower and using the toilet. You had to share it with other people. Wow. That's how you start an adventure. I'm 41 years old. I did not expect me having to share bathrooms in 2023. But, ah, whatever, what are you going to do? When in Rome or when you're in London. So the next day, sports-wise, I did this. This was on the bucket list. I'm going to do it. We talk about it all the time on the air. I said, I'm going to go there. So I went to North London, and I went to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. And you're like, Mark, what's that? That's the English Premier League team. They play there. They play there. And that stadium was built for NFL football. It is one of the most beautiful sports complex I have ever been to in my life. It is amazing. I get why Shad Khan wants to play more football games there. And I get why Roger Goodell wants the NFL to play more games there. That stadium was built to be a soccer stadium, football, but also an NFL stadium. It is state-of-the-art. I took the tour. There's not a bad seat in that house. It is an amazing facility. And it was great when you're on the tour. You're touring the, the um, how do I say this? You're touring the locker rooms, and they're very small. And I love also where, this is very universal. We do this in our country as well. The away team locker room is a dump. It has no necessities, nothing. It's just a room with benches, and you can have your locker. And then the home teams, home teams one is fantastic. It just, it's amazing. State of the art. Tottenham Hotspurs, amazing what they have in there. It really is. They even had, like, in the bathroom with the showers and the hot tubs, they even had an area like vanity mirrors where they could blow dry their hair and make sure they look good post game. It was really funny. So then when you're on the tour, they go, all right, this is for all the Europeans who are checking this out. It goes, all right. We play NFL football. And if you don't know anything about American football, those players are bigger than us. They are bigger human beings. So we had to build separate locker rooms for NFL players. And it was the nicest locker room. Remember, I'm a sports journalist, sports host. I'm in there. It is the nicest thing ever. Like, if if Jaguars were like, all right, we're going to play there in London for a year as they renovate the stadium in Jacksonville. I would not be shocked. I would not. I went to two weekends ago to Jacksonville to see their stadium. That place is a dump. It is the worst stadium in the NFL compared to what I saw there in London when they're playing NFL games over there. It's incredible. It was. So I went to that stadium. 
Then I got on the train. I went south. And I stopped where Arsenal is. And you're like, what stops that on the train stop? Arsenal. That's what the train stop is. So I get off. I, I walk there. I was going to tour it, but it was closed for the day. So I at least just walked around the stadium and I took some photos. Even the team store was closed. Something must have been going on. So it's cool. So that's two stadiums. Then what I did was I got on the train and I went south to the Fulham area. And that's where my team plays Chelsea FC. And it was opening day of the Premier League, opening weekend. So I go there and they're going to play Liverpool. I get there an hour early. It's jam-packed on the streets, and it reminds me of, and I've been to a match there before, it reminds me of like going to Wrigley Field or Fenway Park, because you're in this really cool old neighborhood, and there's the stadium, and everyone's going there, and it was cool where you're seeing Liverpool fans and Chelsea fans, and and I bought a game program, and I bought a new scarf, and, and I looked at prices to go to this match. On StubHub, they wanted the cheapest ticket to be in the nosebleeds. 350 pounds to go to this thing. I love sports. I'm not paying Super Bowl prices to go to a regular season game. That's ridiculous. So I literally went across the street. I was in a pub. I was watching some of it. It was really cool. And I, and I just, you think of some of the cool things that I've gotten to do in my career and in my life. Three stadiums, one day. So then I was exhausted, went back to the hotel. Yes, still had no toilet. I had to share it. I chilled out. Then I got up. I took the tube over to Abbey Road. And it's so cool to see that from a rock fan perspective. Because you've seen that photo your whole life. Everyone, if you know who the Beatles are, it's funny where you're actually there. And I've seen it before, but I went at night because I knew it wouldn't be as as populated. It wouldn't be as many tourists there. And it's funny where you see Abbey Road Studios and you see that street where the famous album cover, where all the Beatles are on there. And it's, it's funny where it's a real road. It's a road that people take every single day. So tourists are on the road trying to take the photo as they're walking by. And then you have people in their car. Honk, 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 honk. So it was really cool where you see that. And then I went over to Baker Street. I said hello to my buddy, Sherlock Holmes. I know it's, it's so crazy how it's all in this city. Went to bed. Got up the next day. Went over to Buckingham Palace. There was a huge crowd where I was like, is King Charles coming out? Is it changing to the guard? It was very confusing. I went around there. I went over to the Diana statue where it's not... It's weird. There's this gigantic swan for Diana in this park. I think it's Hyde Park. I could be wrong. I went to so many places. And then it's a Princess Diana where it's this fountain. And it's really beautiful. And it was really cool to see that. So I was seeing all that. Then I checked out of my hotel. Went to the airport. Got on a plane. It took an hour. And I went to Dublin, Ireland. I've never been there before. It was a new experience for me, and all I have to say is, if you love drinking, this place is the Super Bowl of drinking. When you go online and you look up, okay, what's the best destinations to go to in Dublin, Ireland? The number one thing is you have to go to the Guinness factory, because Guinness is from Dublin, Ireland. The number one thing. Not a church. Not, oh, here's the Eiffel Tower. Oh, here's Buckingham Palace. Oh, here's the Statue of Liberty. All this stuff. No, 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 no. The number one thing is drinking. It was the the Super Bowl of drinking. There's this area where it's downtown the city center. And if you like to bar hop, and we've all done it in our lives, if you're over 21, I hope, where it was just like, I never seen so many bars. And it was it the Temple Bar is the most famous bar. You got to go there. And then the whole area is called the Temple Bar. My my Uber driver, this guy, he's like, "Mark, if you're going to start anywhere, you start at that bar right there at the start of it, at at the just the the entrance." And it was called like Dirty Kelly's. And I go there, and that's where I started. And I went all night long, and I met people from England, France, Ireland, 
Finland, Germany, and just everyone was so nice. And and I was telling this to my mom the other day. It really was like the guy gets on the guitar, just like you've seen in every movie. He gets on the guitar and he starts strumming that guitar. And he's like, yeah, 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 da, 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 yeah, 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 da, da. And this is going on for like 45 minutes straight, an hour. Just nonstop. Yeah, yeah, da, 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 da. And those accents are real. Don't kid yourself. You know, you laddie, and you know, uh, luck of the Irish, and da, 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 da. like everything you think of when that cliche in your brain. They're in and they all say thanks a mil and thanks a million, a laddie, and they. And I'm giving you the PG version because they're dropping those f bombs as well. It was incredible, and you're just those the beers you're drinking there. You know, the first thing you got to do is you got to get the Guinness. You're drinking the Guinness, and then I'm drinking their normal kind of just. I'm trying to drink a light beer. But beer there, it's like an American beer to their beer is like, all right, you have one of theirs. That's like having three American beers. So after about three Irish beers, you're good to go. All right, you're you're having a good time. And when you're in these bars, you know, here it'd be like, well, you know, can I get kind of a Pinot Grigio? Oh, no, 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 no. You're not doing that. No. Beer or whiskey, that's what we're doing. I wish my buddy TJ McMahon with the most Irish name I've ever heard in my life. TJ, if you're listening, I wish you were with me. And I was texting him because TJ would have been crying tears of joy. He really would. He would have loved it so much. And I hope he gets to go there one day. It was so awesome. The people are so nice. And I'm just meeting all these different people. And I start bar hopping with different people. And we, we go to this one bar. And there's this old gentleman. And he's on the guitar. And he's playing that music. And all of a sudden he goes, hey, for all the Americans out there, I'm going to play you some Johnny Cash. And he starts playing that Johnny Cash. And I, I'm i not the biggest country fan. I'm not. But that was pretty cool. That really, He starts singing Ring of Fire. And yeah, that was awesome. I know I'm being sentimental and I'm being a little corny. But that was cool. And another singer goes, he's playing the Irish music. And, and you really learn about history. He's like, look, I want to apologize to everyone. This next song it's written by it's written by a British man. And everyone at the bar starts going, boo, boo. Wow. That's also happening. Unbelievable. So I staggered back to the hotel, right? And by the way, my hotel there in Dublin, uh, they were so nickel and diming me that they're like, oh, you want a towel? Three euro. That's right. Three euro. Unbelievable. And if you get hot in your hotel room, you can rent a fan from us for 20 euro. I'm like, forget that. So I literally just opened the window. Oh, and by the way, here, it's been 100 degrees every day. There, in Europe, it was 70. But again, they don't go by uh, Fahrenheit. They go by, is it Celsius? So to them, you're like, oh, it's 70 out. They're like, what the hell are you talking about? It's 20 degrees to them. So crazy. So the next day I get up, my mother and sister say, you got to go to Trinity College. And that's where the Book of Kells is. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. So I go over there. And it's funny where I'm, in the, I'm at the like bookstore at Trinity College. And you're so used to, in our country, you know, University of Florida. What would it be like, you know, founded in 1895, you know, so I'm just making it up. Most colleges in this country, 1905, 1910. I mean, UCF was founded in what, the 60s or 70s? I mean, it's crazy. Trinity College, it said on a college, the sweater, you always see Trinity College founded 1592. What? And the Book of Kells. Is one of the oldest books there. And I think that was made, ooh, what was it? 800 AD. And it was on display, and you couldn't take a photo of it. 800 AD. There's a book in there. So I saw that. Then I'm walking the city center, and everyone's so nice. And they're talking with that Irish accent. And I'm meeting all these different people. And it's it's so funny. And you meet, so you meet people who've never been to America. And what's fascinating is, they'll ask you, what's with the guns, right? They can't believe how many guns we have in this country. And then they'll go, is Donald Trump going to prison? What's going on with Ukraine? These are all the questions I'm being asked here. A very nice Irish lady asked me, um, 
hey, we're finally getting Hamilton the musical here. Who's Alexander Hamilton? <laughs> that made me laugh. Someone else goes, hey, what's no what, Notre Dame football? What, what do you mean? Are they coming here? Yes. Week zero is this Saturday. And the season's going to start with Notre Dame footballs playing in Dublin against Navy. So it's cool is all over the city, there's Notre Dame signs everywhere. Notre Dame football. And I took a photo of it. I, you know, I wish they would have sold something. It would have been cool to buy. And this is for my buddy Anthony, who loves Notre Dame, where it'll be in English. But in Ireland, they don't just speak English. They speak another language. Is it Celtic? And I heard someone say, yeah, you got to learn Irishman. Irishman? Yeah. So they speak two languages there. And when they're speaking English, it's still kind of hard to understand what they're saying anyway. But it's cool. I wish I would have I gotten that as an actual poster where it's in that Celtic where it says Notre Dame football going to play Navy. That was everywhere around town. And, and I was telling people I'm really originally from Chicago, and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, Irish Catholics are big there. So that city is amazing. Some of the nicest people you ever met. Here's what they have there. Bars. Uh, churches, yes, Catholic churches, and a lot of barber shops for some reason. Everywhere you go, barber shop, and I ask people, why are there barber shops? Like, well, you gotta look good when you go to the bars. <laughs> so I went, I literally went and got my haircut. You can see it here on the video. I went and got my haircut. It was awesome. It really was. Where you hail from? That's how they're talking. I go to the Guinness factory as well. I do it. I go to the Guinness factory. And it was fantastic because you're on that tour and it's like a parody, like an old Simpsons episode where the, the Irish people come on. They're like, you think it's easy making this? It's not. And they're breaking down. All right. We get the best barley. We get the hops and we get the wheat. And this water is sent in from these beautiful lakes. And you're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. give me the Guinness already. I got, it. I got, it. I get how beer works. Give me the Guinness. And the best part at the end you go up top to this like sky, sky rise type bar and you see all of Dublin and you see those beautiful mountains. It was incredible. And I'm drinking that Guinness and like, this is one of the coolest things I've ever done in my life. I, Dublin are, is very cheap to fly to from Florida. I've seen this. It really is. If you want to go on an adventure, I, I'll get like emotional. I loved it so much and I met so many amazing people there and it's just, it was just so much fun. Here it is. And just, again, you haven't drank beer until you've gone there. That's all I'm going to... That is... This is the Super Bowl of drinking is there. It really was. So I had so much fun, and I, I'm, like, walking around. You're seeing all the different areas, and it's cool when you see in Europe where, yes, they have McDonald's, KFC, Burger King, Taco Bell, all that. I'm not eating that. And then you see the shopping, and... They have a lot of stores where, from sports wise, you see this where, you know, you can get your Yankees hat or your White Sox hat, or you can get your Chicago Bulls or your LeBron James Lakers. You know, you they know about American sports. That's very key here. They know about our movies. They know about our TV shows. They play our music. They know about our sports teams, and we know nothing about them in some of these countries. It's wild. So when they meet, they meet someone like me. And I start talking, and this is going to happen to you if you go. They go, you're from the States. They know right away. The minute you start talking, they know right away. And what happens to me is I'll meet people. It's happened in multiple countries for me where I'll meet people. And they'll hear me talk. And they'll go, are you a presenter? That's what they ask me. And you're like, what's a presenter? Over there, presenter is host. We call it a disc jockey, DJ, or a talk show host. They call it a presenter. And when I tell them I am, they can't believe it. And I know I talk fast. And sometimes in this country, I know when I talk to people, I will talk so fast. I have to tell myself to slow down. But to them, they're like, you pronounce every word correctly. And just like emphasize every word. They're like, you're a presenter. And it just, it's funny. And, and I'll show people, you know, like, here's me covering the NBA. And here's me with Kevin Durant, LeBron James, and Steph Curry. And their brains, they can't even comprehend. So one night I'm coming back from the bars. 
And I want to give these two a shout out. So I'm going back from the bars in Dublin. It's midnight. I'm the only one on the street. All of a sudden, I see this couple. And the boyfriend, I believe his name Nico, he's from Paris, France. His girlfriend is from Brazil. And we're talking. It appears we're staying at the same hotel anyway. So we're walking 10 or 15 minutes in the right direction. And that's what's cool about those trips. You meet random people and you see what's going on. And they told me they met in Dublin. But then he got a job. He had to go back to Paris. So they moved to Paris. So we're breaking down all these different places. So I tell him what I do for a living. And he looks at me and he goes, Mark, that's really cool. But you don't cover the greatest sport of them all. And I'm like, okay, I know where this is going. You don't cover football. We know you have football in your country, but you don't cover real football. And you know who I root for? And I'm like, let me guess. You're from Paris. You cover and you love and you root for PSG. And he's like, yes, that's right. And he's like, if you ever need anyone to talk PSG on your show, I'm your guy. So you know what, buddy? I'm going to take you up on that offer one day. I am. And I said, well, what's going to happen to Mbappe? And he got really angry. <laughs> Made me laugh. We were talking about Messi. And, and that's the other thing. I don't think we realize how big Messi is in this country. Because everywhere I went, in every country, someone is wearing a Messi jersey. Like, we think Michael Jordan is big, and LeBron James, and Tom Brady. That Messi guy is gigantic all around the world. He is huge. And the fact, and I can't believe I'm going to say this, I saw people in Europe wearing inner Miami 10 Messi jerseys. They're not messing around. That's their guy. So I had so much fun there. I went to the Jameson factory. I didn't take the tour there. I'm like, I got it. You make alcohol here. So I went there. Then, then, got on a plane, and I went to one of the craziest places I've ever been. All right, I know I'm going long for the open, but it's not a normal show. I have jet lag. We'll make up the rest of the commercials for the rest of the hour. I go to Amsterdam. Amsterdam is one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen in my life. It was amazing. And it's this like Jekyll and Hyde type city. Downtown city center, the neighborhoods, beautiful. Beautiful. They're energy efficient. They're driving electric cars. Most of the people are on bicycles. I am not kidding. Everywhere I went, people were on bicycles. Just everywhere. Just right. Like they don't have a car. I'm on a bicycle. Energy efficient. The food was like, it was like amazing. The tap water was the best tap water I've ever had in my life. Now, was it laced with marijuana? It might have been. I don't know. That's the question. What's it like over there? You can go to a random store and all this marijuana stuff is legal. It's, it's cliche. You see it in movies. You see it in TV. You have people tell you about it. It's not till you're actually there. You see all these just like just stores. You just walk in. And just all this stuff is there. All of it. Oh, you can just buy it, whatever. They had lollipops you could have. It was everywhere. So you, like you're in the city center, you're downtown. French fries are very big there for some reason. They were great. French fries. You think you go to France and French fries. French fries. Amsterdam was gigantic. So I mean that. I go to the red light district. I'm exhausted. It's 11 o'clock at night. I take a bus. The, the buses are great there. The only problem is you get on the bus and it's like, next stop, uh, and you're like, what the hell did that guy just say? All right, I think this is my stop. So you go there. It's tourist season. You've all heard about the red light district. And I know this is a family show, so I will keep this clean. Oh, it's real. It's real. Red light, just like Sheila, my coworker, said, those red lights are on. The ladies are there. Oh, the ladies were there. They're in the window. It's legal. So you're there. Prostitution is legal. Gambling is legal. Sports betting is legal. Marijuana is legal. All these things are going to, I, I swear, look, I grew up. I went to private school. There's a part of me, I'm walking around, I'm like, this is like Sodom and Gomorrah. That's exactly what it felt like to me when you're walking around. You can't. And those women, this is my thing. Those women, they're in the window. 
And if you go into the window, if you go in there, they close the curtain. I, <laughs> I'm trying not to laugh when I say this. Those women were good looking. They were. I will admit this. And they kind of like open their glass door and they're kind of like, hey, buddy. And they're kind of like, you know, come on in. Yeah. Yeah. And there's all these tourists, and it's not like it's discreet. Everyone can see you. There's these random European men. They just go right in, right in there. That was wild. That is one of the wildest things I have ever seen in my life. I have seen some crazy things in a lot of different cities. That has to be up there. <sighs> I, I there's more I could say, but I can't get this show canceled. I have to have a living, right? That is wild. I had in the red light district. I had shawarma, Middle Eastern food. So it's chicken and lamb with the French fries. Oh, ho, ho. now was that also maybe had some stuff in it? Probably. Fantastic. Fantastic. Next day, I'm walking around. I went to the Jewish quarters. I tried to go to Anne Frank, and the, the tour was sold out for the next five days in advance. So I saw the, the actual building, which was incredible to see because it's so famous. Then I went to the Jewish quarters. And I saw a bunch of churches and synagogues and, and you know, you hear about the history of Amsterdam where, hey, everything's fine. Then at about 1940, something horrible happens. And I'm like, ah, this is too much for me. And they, they're very like, you know, the Irish, they're very like outgoing, happy, nice people. The British are more reserved, but they're nice, right? They got some personality to them. <laughs> the Dutch people were very like, like the Germans, like, I have personality. Thank you for coming. They're talking just like that. They were. So I go back to around the red light district the next day. I get the Dutch pancakes from a beautiful brunette Amsterdam lady. And I said, this is amazing. She was cooking me pancakes. I was the only one in there. And those pancakes were fantastic with bananas on them. I mean, fan. Fantastic. This is what I'm talking about, baby. I had so much fun eating that and then looking around different areas. And I go to this, like, uh, these street vendors. This is in the Jewish quarter. And I bought a Holland j soccer jersey. Then I got confused. And maybe someone would explain this to me. So I'm in the Netherlands, but they're also Holland, but they don't want to be Holland. I don't understand. I, I don't get that idea. I have no idea what's going on. Am I in the Netherlands or am I in Holland? I, or am I in both? And no one can explain this to me. So I get a Holland one. Then I go to this other street vendor. He's selling soccer kits. And their big team there is, it's like Ajax. So it's like Amsterdam. So this white jersey. So I try to ask him in, like, why does it say Holland? Where's the team Netherlands one? He looks at the jersey and this guy's like, he's just like, that is a fake. You have bought the fake. I'm like, yeah, I did buy it. No, you buy fake. I was like, well, what are yours? He goes, mine are authentic. Mine are authentic. I'm like, oh, yeah, authentic. Out of that white van right there. Oh, yeah, really? You are you went to the stadium, huh? He's like, mine are authentic. Do you want or do you not want? 50 euro. And I said, all right, I'll take it. So I got the Holland kit, and then I got that Ajax white one. I'll t post a photo of them. They're really cool. So I'm doing that. I'm walking around. I had so much fun. I really did. Just running around. And the best part of any vacation, forgot about what I did there for five minutes. That's the essence of any type of vacation. Or if you're in Europe, a holiday where you forget what your name is and you forget what you do for a living. You just go, 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 go. So I did that. I'm exhausted. I go back to London. And this is the final day. And I'll end this opening monologue that's been going on for 35 minutes. So the last day, what I do is I get to the hotel late. Right. I get there. It's like almost midnight. And uh, I check in. I tell the guy, all right, I need my room. Gives me the room key. I go in. Old building. They're like, Mark, you're on the sixth floor. I'm walking up all these steps. And luckily with newer hotels, you know, you get the USB for your phone. USB outlet. I have a universal European plug that plugs in. Usually hotels will have that ready to go. Not this one. No. This had the old school British plug you got to get. So it's almost midnight. I'm exhausted. I got to charge my phone. It's completely dead. I go back downstairs. I go, look, buddy, none of your charges are working. He goes, yeah, yeah, they don't usually work. Now, if you want to buy the plug from us, it'll be four euro or it'll be, you know, three pounds. What? 
So then I go, all right, just give it to me. I'm exhausted. I got to charge my phone. I go, hey, is anything open around here? Anything. He goes, all right, here's what you got to do. You go two blocks north. You got to go through this uh, this park. You get through the park, then there'll be fast food. I'm not going through a park at midnight in another country. So I'm walking through this park, right? And there's nothing open. So then I go back. The next day, the final day, here's where I toured. I went back to London. I went to Notting Hill, and that's where that famous movie is, where Hugh Grant, Julie Roberts. That neighborhood is amazing. Like just incredible. And they had street vendors for the next mile or so. And if you love records, they had so many record shops there. I don't know. You can buy CDs and records. And it's like the 1995 when you get there. So I do that. I go to the Soho area. I go to Oxford Circus. I go to Chinatown. I'm just walking and walking and walking. I must have walked 8 to 10 miles a day. So if anyone needs me to be in a 5K, I'm officially in shape for the next couple of days. Then I'm going to become a couch potato again. I am. So I end up, I go back to Chelsea, to Fulham. I go to the stadium. I'm there. And I'm going to buy the new kit. I always do that. I'm going to do it. And they say, hey, we got a problem. Uh, Usually on a soccer kit, it'll have the, the logo on there. The logo for the sponsor. Sponsor bowed out. There's no sponsor. So they made all these soccer kits. And they're not going to use them during the season. And these kits are not available to the public. Can't buy them online. Can't do this. So I said, all right, I'm going to buy one. So I spent a lot of money, but they're like, look, these are going to be collector's items. They are. And I said, what player should I get? And he's, and the guy working there goes, hey, well, we, we got this new like Nigerian guy who's 21. His first name is Moses. And I go, sold. My name's Moses. If he's Moses, I'm Moses. And I bought that one. I did. And finally, I found two video game stores. I had to go in. Right? One was in Amsterdam. And I wanted to buy a game that's in Dutch and not in English. So I found this game. It was a soccer game from 2011. Messi's on the cover. He's got long hair. And it's so cool. I bought it for 75 cents. And you open up, it's for PS3. And all of it's in Dutch. None of it's in English. I thought that was really cool. And then in London, I found a store. And I bought some more games in there. And it's cool because their retro video games is not big. It's not a big deal. Here, in this country, retro video games is big money. Big, big money. There, no one cares. So I'm buying all these different games, and they're all for British, you know, like, uh, they're all English, and they're Britain games. And and I love where I asked the guy, could I get one of those posters? He's like, yeah. And he sold it to me for, like, I got three of them, and they were each a pound a piece. It's probably $2, right? So it's like Resident Evil. And what's cool when you're in Europe is, you know, in this country... The date is, like, what's today? So today is 8 23 In Europe, they go by date, month, then year. So I have these posters where it's all, like, British-type stuff. I, I, I got to get it framed. It's so much fun. I did. I met so many people. I had a great time. And I do this every single time I go out of the country. I come back, and I do the great recap show. And that's what I do with the monologue. I really do, and I, and I was very sad to leave. I really was. I had so much fun. It was just, it was just great to get out and get away and meet all these new people. And don't worry, I met the ladies and the European ladies. They love themselves, Mark Moses. That's what I'm talking about, man. I did. I was on Bumble. I will admit this, and I know my mother's probably watching. I was on Bumble, and there's that feature where it shows you how many women like or match you. I had over a thousand women. A thousand. It's a good time. That's uh, that's all I'm going to say on that subject. That's how you boost the ego. But I had to come back. I had to come back, and I had to come here, and I got to work because it's not where you want to go; it's where you're needed. And I'm needed here in Florida. And uh, we're gonna do some really cool things this fall. We really are. Really are. And uh, I'm excited for football to be back. I can't wait. And you have high school football starting this Friday with the regular season. I, I don't count kickoff classics. Those are wait, those are preseason games. High school football starts on Friday. You are going to have college football starting Saturday. And the big enchilada, the greatest sport ever created. The NFL is going to start here in September. 
And it's rock and roll time, buddy. That's why I went on holiday now. Because once we get to Labor Day, it is go time. Or as I call it in meetings, it is money time around here in the great state of Florida. Until we get to about Christmas. I love it. I do. So that's everything. If you have any questions off air, you want to know what really was going on, yeah, you can message me on social media as at Mark Moses Show. That's right. Now, now, there is a story from Vieira High School. We will break it down next here on the show. And welcome to a Monday. This is Jim Rome with your.